Hello, and welcome to episode 19, all about the departure of Boromir. Chapter 1, Book 3 of The Two Towers, being the 19th part of That's What I'm Talking About. My name is Mary Clay. If that's too complicated for you, just call me MC. And today I'm joined by Haley Simkis of Brandy Lane Publishers for the first chapter of Two Towers. We're on Two Towers, y'all. <laughs> Hi. And uh, Haley, you were saying before we officially started the uh, the episode that Two Towers is your favorite. Oh, yeah. Like my favorite of Tolkien's stuff is definitely The Hobbit, just because like the tone is so different. But like of the trilogy, I love Towers so much. It's just like really different from Fellowship and Return. Like the thing with <sighs> the thing with my boy, Jert, <laughs> is <laughs> as we call him, is that he has no sense of pacing. God love him. He has no sense of pacing <laughs> at all. Like, <laughs> like Tolkien, I, what? I know... What do you mean no sense of pacing? <laughs> The man who spends 150 pages covering five days and then in the span of two paragraphs, yes. two weeks pass. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, like he friggin' fellowship is like 30 years <laughs> pass in the first half of the book and nothing oh, happens. Oh yeah, in those just 30, that like, minor that's the point detail. Of those 30 years is that nothing happens. Like, but then like you get into towers and it's immediately like, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, what's happening? And that like that doesn't stop. Like that's the whole book. It's just everyone like, oh, we're in it now. <laughs> Nothing is going right, and I love it so much. I mean, that's how you create compelling fiction and drama and and problems yeah. that need to be solved. So I'm excited. Yeah, so I'm like, hyped. All of the build up, yeah, like all of the build up of like people telling you all throughout fellowship, like trust me, it gets good. It gets good. This is when it like, finally gets they good. Start actually doing stuff. <laughs> not that like yeah, this is when this is the payoff, and it's so good. Not that fellowship <laughs> wasn't good. It was good. Yeah, it's no, just so dense. Fellowship is good. And it's just it's so slow. dense and slow. And he's like setting up this world, and like you don't have a lot of like side mm -hmm. characters. Like they're just backpacking. Like even when they get on the road, they're not like. Like, they're not like on the road going to like towns and inns and meeting like fantastical creatures. They're in the middle of God nowhere. nowhere. <laughs> and they're only talking to like each other and the occasional wolf. Like it's not good. <laughs> the occasional like, wolf, man. Like at Towers, you get like friends. It's nice. Aw, uh, I'm hype. I'm also very excited because it was explained to me in the previous episode by my guest that Two Towers... The first half covers Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli traveling, and then it moves to Frodo and yeah. Sam. And I'm kind of glad that I know that ahead of time, like going into it, so that I'm not like, yeah. what? Where did Frodo and Sam go? But at the same time, I care more about Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli yeah, than I do it's, Frodo and it's, Sam. It's like, they're kind of... <laughs> Like, Frodo and Sam are not going to disappoint you in this book. Like, I will say that for them. Like, their part of the book, like, is actually really interesting and cool. But, like, the fun thing about, like, the whole Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli triad is that, like, this is kind of the first time that you get to see them as adult swim, like, without yeah, the Yeah, there's nothing like, holding them back. Like, it's just... <laughs> Yeah, like, none of the hobbits know what's going on, and also, like, Merry and Pippin, Pippin are the babies of the group. They're the equivalent of, like, an 18-year-old and a 22-year-old. Oh like, they're, they're children to these guys. Like, they, so, like, this is, like, the dads, like, oh, God, we lost the kids. Yeah, literally. We'll, we'll yeah, we'll have to, we'll get into that um, once we yes, get into yes. the chapter. But, <laughs> oh, man, shoot, there's something I was going to say. Oh, um, it's just, so have you seen the me, it's a, like, it's a video meme of um Paul Rudd on some like hot sauce eating is show. It, is it hot what is it Hot Ones? I is think it the one with the hot wings? That might be what it's... Maybe it's Hot Wings. I don't know. But it's it's this like YouTube series or maybe it's a regular, I don't know, digital series or whatever. But yeah. celebrities come on and they eat increasingly hot hot wings. And Paul Rudd's hot, episode yeah, hot ones. has recently... His episode or a clip of his episode has recently been made a meme where he's going like, look at us. Look at us. Who would have thought? Here we are, the two of us. <laughs> and someone uh, captioned that with Frodo and Sam after they destroyed the ring. And it made me laugh. Spoilers. For so oh, I know they destroyed the ring. Like, it's kind of like how 
before you even open the first book of Harry Potter, you know that Voldemort dies. Like, oh, it's yeah. just how... Yeah, definitely. Like, I this isn't Game like of spoilers. Thrones, you know? I, like, think this, I think in this chapter, there's even spoilers where it's like, and for many years after that, it's like, all right, so there were many years, like, the world didn't end, thanks to yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then also talking about spoilers, I made the mistake of reading the chap content of what do they call it? The index thing. Table of contents. Oh, table of the contents. Table of contents. That's it. Yeah, I made the mistake of reading the chapter titles because I know that we're going to meet Saruman at some point because there's a chapter yeah. called The Voice of Saruman. Then we're going to yeah. meet Gollum because it says The Taming of Smeagol. At some point, Sam has to make a choice because the last chapter is called The Choices of Master Samwise. <laughs> Yep. So <laughs> it, it's like good though. Like it's it, it all goes down in like really interesting ways. Like nothing's been ruined for you, definitely. So I don't think I'll read the table of contents for Return of the King then. But um, <laughs> so but kind of using that as our jumping off point. This chapter is titled The Departure of Boromir. And you can go to the Tolkien About Instagram and see my live reactions. Because when I was <laughs> starting this chapter and I saw it was called The Departure of Boromir, I was like, oh my God, Boromir, what did you do now? Like, yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. he's, no, Boromir, he's... Look, what do you mean? Boromir goes home in this chapter. They're, they roast marshmallows and then he leaves and he goes home. And well, no, I fine. thought he was just going to like pull a really dramatic thing and be like, I'm leaving by and just walk away super dramatically. <laughs> I, mean, he kind of did. I mean, and then something very different happened. So um, I recommend yep. going to the Tolkien about Instagram and looking at the highlights on the profile called reactions. I had a reaction to this chapter. That's putting <laughs> yeah. it lately. Anywho, so the two towers kicks off with. Aragorn is running around frantically looking for Frodo still. He is kind of able to track his path because he's a ranger and he's a, a woodsman. Yeah. Yo. Yeah, no, that's his whole thing. Side note, Aragorn would be a really dope Boy Scout troop leader. Oh, yeah, no, 100%. He would, but he would be like the most intense one where like... Yeah, he would be like, he he's going to endanger your kids, but like they're going to they're gonna like build character from he's, it. Oh my God. He's like how Ron Swanson leads the Pawnee Rangers. Yeah. Where they're like, he, he's like, all you need is this piece of tarp and a rope. Now build your shelter. Go. And they're like, but like... <laughs> What activities are we going to do? And he's like, yeah, no, that, we're gonna that's sit, Aragorn and the Hobbits We're going to sit here around the fire. That's the activity. <laughs> yeah, no, like, picture Aragorn just like, I know what I'm about, son. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> so that's him that's the dude oh also uh side note at least in my edition the i don't know if it was like this in the original editions too but i just thought it was interesting my edition the page numbers continue with how they left off in the previous book whereas instead of starting over at like page one two three the first page is page 403 in my edition huh that's interesting. And which is a, it's a little bit off. The last page in my edition to Fellowship of the Ring was like 407. So it's a little bit off. But I just thought it was right. interesting that like they chose to continue the page numbers because that's how that's how Tolkien originally intended the book. Well, because he he, re he originally intended the book to be all one book because, again, yeah. he has no sense of pacing. <laughs> <sighs> Poor dude. And that's and you know, also yeah. I have to say, it's it's very obvious starting off with this chapter that like, oh, this is just the start of another chapter. It's not the start of a book. Yeah. There's no like underneath the windowsill sat a gangly eleven year old boy with dark hair and an unusual scar. And yeah. what was most unusual about this boy was that he was a wizard and his name was Harry you know, there's none of that. Yeah, it's not yeah, it's not like book two of like he's explaining everything over again. He's like no Oh, I'm assuming that you're jumping back in uh, having just finished the first yeah. one. That's how confident I am that I've hooked It's like you. how Netflix series no longer do like a previously on blank mm -hmm. because like, I, they know like, that we you're, all know you're sitting yeah. here. On, like we know that it's still Saturday. Like you have not moved from the it's couch. Like, for I all know. Of it's like, I know exactly what happened five episodes ago because I watched those. I watched that episode five mm -hmm. hours ago. So yeah, again, this isn't Game of Thrones. Yeah. Anyway, 
Interesting note. So Aragorn, uh, then he sees the seat on, what is it called? Amon Hen or? Amon Hen, yeah. Amon Hen. Okay, cool. Um, what is the, without, if it's going to give anything away, <sighs> no, what it's is not, the significance like, I, of this seat? Because like, I was rereading, I reread this chapter and like at Christina, Christina Khan, who you also talked to, at yes. her suggestion, I also uh, reread like the chapter that comes before this, like the last chapter of Fellowship. And like I couldn't remember, I like I know like the deal with that seat, but I couldn't remember like what it's for, like what the whole like backstory is. I looked it up; it's literally just there. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> so. Like I, I don't know if you've like been over a lot of the like backstory type stuff. Um, but, like, I'm afraid to because I spoil myself constantly. So <laughs> like I can I can give it I can like explain it a little bit like in so far as there is an explanation without really spoiling things. Like so they've been bringing up Numenor a lot. You might have noticed. Yes. Like in Fellowship, yeah, they mention it a lot. It's like they're Atlantis. Like, so it was, like, this great civilization, and then it disappeared, and, like, oh, okay, there's some gotcha. remnants. So, like, Gondor is, like, kind of a remnant. They've forgotten how to do a lot of their dope stuff, but, like, they still... The land is just crisscrossed with all of these ruins of stuff that no one fully understands or, like, knows how they built it or how it worked or what it was for, and the seat is one of those things. So, like, okay. in the last chapter of Fellowship, Frodo sits in it, and he sees all this stuff far, far away that's, like, going on. So Aragorn here is, like... He knows the seat. He knows that it's, like, supposed to, you know, if you sit in it, maybe you can, like, see many hundreds of miles. And he's like, maybe it'll give me some clarity <laughs> as to what's going on. That's literally what I wrote down. I wrote down, poor Aragorn, just looking for any kind of guidance at all. Yeah, he's looking situation. for, like, divine intervention. And he sits in the <laughs> chair and it's like, you like hills? Because we got hills. Yeah. And he's like, great. Yeah, let's see, so it says, yeah, so he goes up and he sits in the chair and says, yeah, literally, he turns, yeah, po like, just poor Boromir, he's literally just looking for any semblance of guidance, and it says, yeah. he turned from the north back again to the north and saw nothing save the distant hills, so... Yep. Poor dude. <laughs> He's getting yeah. no help whatsoever. He yeah. was under the impression when no he luck. started this journey that Gandalf would be doing most of the legwork here, but yeah. Gandalf's yeah. gone. Yeah, no, the one kid in the group project who was doing anything uh, yeah. died fighting a Balrog, and now you're <laughs> stuck with the poster board. So good luck with that. And then uh, <laughs> you're stuck with the poster board. And now the poster board has walked off and has disappeared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And your internet just crashed and everything is terrible. Yeah. Just like this this idea now that Frodo is equivalent. If if this is a group project <laughs> metaphor, Frodo is yeah. the poster board. He's not yes. a group member. He's, he's the poster board. He's not board. a group member at all. <laughs> oh, man. He's oh like that. He's like the kid who's on the basketball team, so he has to do well in order to stay on the basketball team. And you don't want to be the group member that like sells him out to be like he's not doing his part of the job because then he would get kicked off the basketball team if he fails the project and then the whole school yeah. would be mad because he's the star basketball player. Yeah. I may be speaking from experience here, but... Except that also Frodo was short, so like... Yeah, not <laughs> except for the basketball. fact that Frodo would 100% not be the star basketball player. Yeah. <laughs> the Hobbits wouldn't even have <laughs> basketball to begin with. That's too much work. <laughs> no, they, they're they golfers. They're more golfers. Anywho. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like they might be more pickleball people. Oh, no. They, have you they ever played invented pickleball? golf. There's a whole thing i have not played i have not played pickleball. oh wait literally they yeah no there's there's like a whole thing in like i think it's i don't know if it comes up in <laughs> fellowship but it's definitely in the hobbit that like one of bilbo's ancestors invented golf oh my gosh like in the wow. middle of a goblin battle that like was that's... fighting a goblin and knocked its head off and it went down a rabbit hole and that's how golf was invented oh you've got to read the that's hobbit great. dude oh i'm so i'm very excited to read the hobbit especially because people say that it sounds like people are are more likely to have read The Hobbit than any of the trilogy well, because, because it's, it's the more, more yeah 
it's more digestible, it's shorter, yeah. and, like, yeah. it's got more of, like, a fairy tale vibe, because he was writing it as, like, not to go tangential, but, like, he was writing it as a bedtime story for his kids. Yes. Like, he was telling his kids verbally this bedtime story, and they kept calling him out on, like, screwing up details. He would be like, and then Bilbo saw Nori's blue cloak hidden under the leaves, and his kids would be like, uh, Dad, Nori's cloak was green, and he would, like, go over, and there's, like, quotes of him being like, damn the boy. Like, <laughs> so he had to write the whole book. <laughs> oh man, that's great! Yeah, I'm I'm excited yeah. for the Hobbit. Anywho, yeah, so Boromir sits on the seat Air- and he Aragorn. sees nothing. I mean, Aragorn. Yeah, um, I was looking at the word Boromir. Um, <laughs> poor Boromir. So, yep. anywho, so then he hears the horn of Boromir and is like, ah. Oh no! Uh, trouble is amiss, and yeah, or whatever, yeah. whatever. Um, yeah. And runs down the I, hill. I actually like. I actually love his line right here because one of the things that took me a long time to really get about like this series, but like old timey talk books in general, where people talk like this, is like learning to read behind between the lines and like understand what they're really saying. So he's here. He's like. It sounds very Shakespearean and highbrow. It's like, oh, yes, yeah. an ill fate is on me this day, and all that I do goes amiss. Where is Sam? Where, like, what he's really saying is, like, I am just having one of those days. Where is Sam? <laughs> I told him to follow me. <laughs> like, I cannot do anything right today. What is wrong? Yeah, yeah. So it's at this do point better. that he realizes that Sam is not here. And he's like, I don't have time for that now. And he goes running down the hill with a sword out. And then. Look, here's the thing. Here's the thing, people. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm going to laugh a lot in the next couple minutes. and um, That's how we deal with sadness. And Well, I, here's the thing. I wouldn't even call it sadness. It's not that I'm experiencing joy from this part of the book. It's that I'm just remembering what I was thinking at the time and my reaction and my predictions and how they were completely wrong and just laughing at myself. So (laughs) I'm enjoying watching you go through this. (laughs) So he goes running down the hill and then he finds Boromir. He was sitting with his back to a great tree as if he was resting, but Aragorn saw that he was pierced with many black feathered arrows. His sword was still in his hand, but it was broken near the hilt. His horn cloven in two was at its at his side. Many orcs lay slain, piled all about him and at his feet. So this was when I screamed and then started laughing hysterically when I was reading this for the first time. Because <laughs> I will remind you that I did not think Bor I knew that Boromir died. I know that I knew ahead of time that Boromir was dying. I didn't know when. I had no idea when that was gonna be happening. And mm-hmm. Once again, I thought that this chapter was going to be about Boromir causing a fuss and just walking out and peacing out. And then he would show up later and he would die in battle heroically. And then I was also laughing because in my edition of the book, he literally dies on the first page. Oh, my God. So my book breaks it up with Aragorn saw that he was pierced with many page flip black feathered arrows. And I was like, oh, my God. He killed Boromir off on the first page of Two Towers. <laughs> he killed him yeah, off. No, to- yeah, no, Towers doesn't mess around. Like, it just starts you off, like, right in the mess. And oh, Like, hey, remember how we're at war? <laughs> oh, and I also have to say, my note right before all this, when the horn blew, I wrote down, oh, yay, comma, action, exclamation point. <laughs> And I was like, oh, my God, stuff is happening. This is great. And then my next note, yeah, no, and then my next note is Rip Boromir. <laughs> Rip in so, peace, yo. Um, no, I, I also love the image of Aragorn, like this big heroic dude, like running through the woods with his sword out, like yelling his war cry. Uh, you mean Aragorn? And everyone is dead. Sorry, Aragorn. We're both doing yeah. that. I mean, they're, they're both the burly men of the group, so. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> well, now we don't have to tell them apart anymore. This is true. <laughs> So listen, it was a human heavy group. Anyway, this is, it was, I mean, this just gives us better diversity. If anything, I'd say it's a habit heavy group. I mean, not anymore. It's a, it's a Very nothing true. heavy group, yeah. but um, yeah. <laughs> so then I was also just laughing because I'm like, oh my God, Boromir dies on the first page of two towers. That's such a Boromir move. <laughs> Within the fir- oh my he gosh, would. so I'll I'll just read this next part. Aragorn asks what's happened to Frodo, and Boromir says, "I tried to take the ring from Frodo. I am sorry. I have paid." 
They have gone the halflings. The orcs have taken them. I think they are not dead. Orcs bound them. This is important that we will talk about later on. And then mm-hmm. he says, Farewell, Aragorn. Go to Minas Tirith and save my people. I have failed. No, said Aragorn, taking his hand and kissing his brow. You have conquered. Few have gained such a victory. Be at peace. Minas Tirith shall not fall. Boromir smiled. Which way did they go? Was Frodo there? said Aragorn. But Boromir did not speak again. Rip Boromir. <laughs> Rest yep. in... And that's like, a, that's like another Aragorn screw up for the day. Like, should have asked that should've first. Da- yeah, should've he should have clarified when he says, the orcs took the halflings. Should have clarified. Wait, 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 which one? Which one? Which There's one? four which of one? them. There's four <laughs> of them. Which one? <laughs> you are going to have to specify. <laughs> yeah. So it's also at this point that I was like, why did Tolkien not... Just kill Boromir at the end of fellow. I know he didn't intend to end fellowship. I know they there was, but it was still the end of book two, and this is still the beginning of book yeah. three. So why it would have been such a good ending to end it with a dramatic death and pe- like how they ended the movie. I yeah. see why they ended the movie the way they ended the movie. Yeah. Side note, I should say that now we are going into full ter- unknown territory with me and Lord of the Rings because I haven't seen the Two Towers movie. So I have zero okay. idea what happens now. So this will be extra fun. All right. <laughs> I mean, I had almost no clue before, but now I have no clues. So Yeah, no. I think like with the movie, it's just easier to like intercut the scenes like... And this is what's going on with Frodo yeah, and Sam. Yeah, it's all kind of happening at the same time. This is what's going on with Frodo and Sam. This is yeah, like with this, it was more like you get a chapter of what's going on with Frodo and Sam, and then the chapter. Yeah, of what it's kind of like meanwhile, else, so like, Boromir was dying. Yeah, <laughs> meanwhile, everything is terrible. It would yeah. So I, I just I still just think it would have been such a better ending of book two for their like the end. I was talking about how the ending of book one is great. It's a very dramatic cliffhanger of Frodo being chased by the Black Riders and he passes out and you don't know what happens. That's a great cliffhangery ending, dramatic ending. The the ending of book two is like and Frodo and Sam sailed off, sailed off into the sunset. The end. And and then, and then this yeah. one is like, Boromir dies. <laughs> Everything sucks. It's like once upon yeah. a time, Boromir was shot several times and he died. I think it might have just been like Tolkien just wanted to be able to jump right in with the action. If he had pushed this back like just one chapter so that like Fellowship ended on this one, then when you jump back in, it wouldn't have been like quite been as exciting. Start- yeah. It wouldn't have been quite as yeah. yeah, that's the caveat is then you yeah, yeah then you, you either have to end one dramatically and then the other one starts out slower. And like since uh, since the start of Fellowship was so slow, I'm sure there was a fight with a publisher somewhere in here. Oh, I'm sure he had several fights with the publisher, considering he wanted this all to be one book. So, and the mm. publishers were like, "My man, J- I don't I don't know what the JR stands for. My man, J like it, J yep. J Jer- Jafar. That's not his name. <laughs> <laughs> J John Rolkin Rolkin Tolkien." <laughs> And then my next thought after that of of being like, well, why didn't he just kill Boromir off in the first place? My next thought is, oh, my God, Tolkien could not wait to kill Boromir. He literally just immediately (laughs) killed him. He was like, well, I mean, obviously the action has to move forward from here on out without Boromir. So Mm -hmm. he's dead. Out of here. Pulled it. Yeah. Yeah. George R. Man, what is George R. R. Martin? So he's just copying Tolkien. What is he what did. is his? Yeah, no, deal? he no, he literally put the two R's in as an homage. Wow, what a yeah. what a what yeah. a piece of work. The, the R's, by the way, stand for Ronald Ruyel. What for J. R. R. or G. R. 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 Well, I mean, I think it's I think it's the both I think it's both in both cases, but yeah, it's Ronald Ruyel. Oh, okay, glad it's not Ronald Reagan, which is what I thought you were. <laughs> Yes. So I was just so it was it was that this was the point where if you go to the Instagram story, like I was talking about where you will just see me laughing hysterically because Mm -hmm. I was so caught off guard by how abruptly he dies. It's yep. so abrupt. It's at yeah. the bottom of the first page. And I yep. was just, I was like, oh, okay, there's going to be some more setup and adventure. And then, no, nope, he just, he's no, dead. It's a, it's a deliberate narrative choice. He just wanted to slap you in the face, like, like with a wet fish. Like, he just, <laughs> <laughs> like, he doesn't care about your feelings. Oh, my gosh. So, oh, I should also mention that... 
<laughs> Both of my producers inadvertently spoiled Boromir's death, like how he Aww. dies for me. We were oh, taught, no. I sent them, I'll have to like post screenshots of the text messages somewhere. I was talking about carving a pumpkin and mentioned something about Boromir. And then Tyler was like, oh, stick a bunch of arrows in it. And I said, wait, what? And he was like, and he's like, uh, is Boromir not dead yet? And I said, no, he's definitely still alive. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, so I know that at some point Boromir dies via arrow, yep. but or arrows, plural. Yeah. But I mean, like, it, like if you see the movie, it's like fair enough. Even if someone spoilers uh, spoils it for you, it's like okay, well, he was being played by Sean Bean. Like, I don't know what I was expecting. Did he? Well, that's the thing. Did Sean Bean have a also side note? I think it's way more funny if you say Sean Bean, if you say like Scene Bean or yeah. Sean. Bon. Yeah, you have to pick one of those two. Yeah, I think that's fun. Anyway, yep. did he um, get the reputation for always being killed because of Lord of the Rings, or was it before oh, Lord no. of the Rings? He, like, I, I think that was around the time people noticed, like, man, he always dies. Like, he... <laughs> Because, like, I I know that a lot of movies in, like, the 90s, he also, like, dies a bunch. So by, to- by the time of, like, Lord of the Rings, it was like, okay, well, now it's a pattern. Poor guy. Yeah. On IMDb, when you go on the app, it shows, like, what he's best known for. And one of the movies he's best, no- best known for is called Black Death. So that's mm-hmm. one thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he no- he dies in that one. I'm assuming Black Death is about the, the plague. I believe so. so. Honestly, it just looks like a lot of war and battle movies. Yes. Yeah. No, he was in, like, a lot of stuff. But, like, I think Lord of the Rings, I think, was one of the things that made him, like, a big deal. Poor dude. I mean, I get it. I, I too, am known for being typecast. When I was in high school, I was typecast as the old woman. I played a lot <laughs> of old ladies. Oh, in no. Plays. It was awful. Got to a point where, like, our director announced, like, what the play was going to be that fall, and everyone looked it up, and there was, like, one character, and it was, like, Ethel, aged 80, and everyone's like, oh, great, Mary Clay, you have a part in this play. And I was like, great, thanks so much. Oh, nice. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, have you ever seen the YouTube video of, like, the full compilation of Sean Bean's death scenes? That... Oh, I was going to look it up now, but it probably shows his lore. Even though technically I've already seen the Lord of the Rings death, I, yeah. I clearly don't remember it, so... Nope. Anyhow, yeah, nope. So. It is like five minutes long. All this being said, yeah. I was I was very shocked that he died so abruptly. Mm-hmm. Yep. <clears throat> and then also, I'm going to bring up, it might be a controversial point, but everyone has told me, because I make fun of Boromir constantly for being the worst. Mm. And everyone's like, oh, his redemption arc is so great, blah, blah, blah. And everyone's like, oh, just wait, he gets better. Like, people were literally telling me, oh, just wait, he gets better. Up until the most pr- the most recent episode, <laughs> which is the end of Fellowship. Like, he literally has, like, one more page to live after after that. So my question is, like, how, like, at this point, I don't get how like he's dead he can no longer like how can he get because better here's the he's thing, dead like, here's the thing he's he is dead like but it's sort of a it's like a post-mortem redemption type thing because you meet some people who knew him and okay. like you get a more That's... complete picture of his character and like okay. you also kind of get Mary and Pippin's perspective of what happened here So you do kind of find, like, this is very abrupt, like, just to smack you in the face with it, like, right off the bat, but, like, you do get a little more. Plus, like, in this book, you start seeing the effects of the ring some more, because, like, it hasn't really affected Frodo up to this point. Like, yeah. he, he, it's, like, kind of messing with him, but, like, this is the book where you start going, like, oh, dang, I still don't know what this thing does, but it is bad yeah. news. I will say, so I know that Denethor, is that how you say his name? Yeah. Okay, so I know, I know that he is Boromir's father, and I've also yes. been told by multiple, like, people commenting or replying or whatever to stuff saying, like, oh, just wait till you get to Denethor. He's even worse. And here's the thing. Yeah. I So there was some meme that was like, oh, the signs as Lord of the Rings characters. And I'm an Ares. So I went to look to see who the Ares was. And the Ares is Denethor. And I like tweeted something about it. And I was like, I don't know what this means, but I'm sure I'll find out later. So obviously I'll find out. And so here's the thing. 
is with people being like, oh, he's even worse than Boromir. He's the worst, blah, blah, blah. Now I feel like I'm working on a on a reverse psychology thing where I feel like I'm going to be like, Dinahor is great, y'all. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, no, he's kind of not. Like, it's, you meet Denethor and you're like, oh, You don't have to Boromir say too much, had, but. I mean, like, it's just like, oh, Boromir had daddy issues. Okay. Cause like, oh, geez. Bo- like, Boromir spent like a couple months, like, in close proximity to the ring in like d- dire straits. Cause like, you, you start finding finding out like what's been going on in Gondor like and why he's so desperate like this is the book where you actually get involved with the war this is the book where like they've been okay. out in the wilderness they haven't actually been like interacting with anything they've just been running into like roving orcs. yeah they've bands. been doing nothing this is where you end up with like battles this is where you see like what's actually happening out there all these armies are mobilizing like stuff is starting to go down and like Boromir's been in like the thick of that for a while like most of his life so like that's why he wanted the ring so bad was like all right well i i need something i need something i've got nothing so he spent months in close proximity to the ring and like held out for this long and like you meet denethor and denethor like from a distance not even knowing where the ring is is like i want that ring like he's never even is it like never... a, is this a i'm since i'm sensing a prince zuko banished from the fire nation arc Just type of thing maybe was, a was little boromir sent to capture frodo and no no it's not quite <laughs> in that, order to like reclaim a little his bit, like a little his, tiny his, bit his title as prince of no gondor he, yeah, like he's He's not so much the Restore one with like Restore his honor. <laughs> oh, actually, now that I say this, I do kind of imagine Boromir dying very similarly to how they kill Zuko off in the play mm-hmm. version of Avatar: The Last Bear- I mean, Airbender within the show. That's kind of what happens here, just a little bit. <laughs> honor. Yes. But like, there's I don't know. There's like a lot of family issues going, like daddy issues going on there in that whole family and uh you'll 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 see some more some different sides of him and like get a little more of like where he was coming from all right lit anyway so then legolas and gimli run up and they see aragorn next to the now dead boromir and they all kind of cry and say alas a bunch of times and Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and then they're also like where's merry and pippin and where's sam and frodo where are the kids (laughs) It's also at this point that, so I made this point in the previous episode, and I'm going to say it again. Sam and Frodo really did not care that much about what happened to Sam, to Merry and Pippin, because Sam and Frodo peaced out, and Merry and Pippin literally got carried off by orcs. Yeah, well, like, they weren't there for that, like, but also, (laughs) low-key, part of the reason Merry and Pippin were sent along, despite basically being minors, was as bait. Like, they're distractions. (laughs) Like, they, because in Fellowship, they were pick, they were trying to pick out, like, the last two members they had had like seven people that were definitely oh, yeah. going and, and they were the like the only Maybe. reason the only reason that Merry and Pippin went is because one Elrond was like I think it's too dangerous to send Pippin back home because he's too little so he's yeah. going to go with you guys on Come a more on your, dangerous your journey much more dangerous quest <laughs> and then Merry was like well I'm coming are you kidding me you're yeah. going to have to like chain me here if you don't want me to go yeah so and then, I mean like, believe me yeah it's not I've like- never I've never been in the camp of like oh the hobbits are the best part of the fellowship <laughs> they're the most oh, no, useful like, or whatever yeah like they like no one could really stop them from going because like also they're relatives of frodo's so like all of these you know great noble lords are all about like all right well you, you're kin so like you've got to stick together but like also low-key they were all sort of like well if we've got four hobbits and all hobbits kind of look the same to these guys <laughs> There's, a, there's like a the, one in four chance oh, of them oh, grabbing wait, sorry, the right no, one. Now I see, I see. I, I see what you're saying now that the orcs might have probably took Merry and Pippin because they're like, oh, a halfling has the, yeah, like, the it, ring. Yeah, and they no, took like, they, like orcs, don't take, orcs don't really do like nuance. Like you can't tell an orc like it's particularly like the hobbit with the dark curly hair. The, the orcs are just orcs like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, <laughs> yeah, no, the orcs are just like, I'm just, just grab one of the short ones. Just grab, they're idiots. <laughs> like you have to give them simple instructions. Just grab one of the little ones with the big feet it'll be yeah. fine and like, we'll sort the, out the details yeah, later so they grab like a couple of hobbits and maybe also Gimli like yeah maybe like also they're, Gimli they're not very <laughs> smart so like that's kind of all you can do but anyway I was just like the thing is is that 
Sam and Frodo did not ever once think to, like, they didn't even stop to be like, hmm, maybe we should go see Merry and Pippin. Maybe we should go talk to them first. Maybe we should get them. Oh, but what about, they didn't even say like, oh, look at us going off on this journey. But what about Merry and Pippin? Frodo was trying to peace out on his own. He didn't even want Sam with I mean, him. Yeah. Sam like just knew where he was going. And Sam happened to be the one who was like, well, happened try to, and like, stop me from following him, yeah. you. Like, I will drown myself. I will drown myself. They weren't even, they weren't even so much as a thought. And I'm yeah. like, okay, well, I might be rethinking my, my, my sorting of the hobbits into Hufflepuff. <laughs> Side note, I, I still do think they are all Hufflepuffs. Oh, no. And that's, I mean, <laughs> but... they're an entire race of Hufflepuffs. There's, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's what, it's what happens when, yeah, when all of the Hufflepuffs go to live somewhere by themselves. Yes. Oh my gosh. But yeah, so they're Gimli. So now it's down to Legolas, Gimli, and Aragorn. And they decide that they will put Ar- um God, I'm getting so many people confused. <laughs> There's also just so many characters. There's this- so many characters. They decide they're going to put Boromir in a butt. I can't talk. They're going to put Boromir in a butt. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, that's what Nemo calls it, so why not? (laughs) Anyway, they're going to put Boromir in a boat and give him kind of like a, what do they call it? Like a a sailor's goodbye, basically. Where they're going to sail him off. Let him off the float edge of off down the river. Yep. Yeah, they're literally, and then they're like, let the falls take him wherever they may. And now I'm just, I was just like, that sounds like a really like gruesome way to like send a body down a river. I feel like I, I mean, read, I know he's in like, a boat, but. I, I don't remember if this was in fellowship or if this was like a piece of trivia I read at some point, but apparently like one of the details of those little boats is that like they never tip. Like, like, it's just oh, like an it elf magic been... thing. So they were like, all right, well, even if it goes over the edge of the waterfall, it'll stay up. Yeah, it might have been in Fellowship when the elves were giving them the boats. And they're yeah, like, no, by the way, these boats, yeah. these boats are pretty good. I mean, yeah, they're, it, like, they're, if they're if like really... actually idiot proof. Like, you <laughs> like, cannot if you're sta- these Like, things. if you're standing up and rocking back and forth, it'll probably flip over. But like, aside from that, like, yeah. you should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they decide that they will send Boromir because they don't want to bury him anywhere that's not... They, they, they want to send him home, but they also can't afford to just be... Yeah, they don't have that kind of time on their hands. Yeah, they also can't just be weakened at burning it <laughs> the whole thing oh, where God, they're just carrying uh, around a dead body with them. Imagine if they did. That would have been <laughs> Just put some great. shades on him, it'll be fine. Piggyback, <laughs> piggyback, we'll take turns. So they put him in the, they're going to put him in the boat and send him down the river. And eventually, they're, they're assuming eventually the river will take him to Gondor, where, where he should properly end up. Yeah. And so then they start looking around at the orcs. They're going to gather their weapons and then also kind of like gathering some clues. And they mm-hmm. realize, based off of the weapons and the way the weapons are built, that they are not from... Um, sorry, I'm rereading. They're like not all from the same like place. Yeah, like they. Let's see. It says work of Westerness. Is that a word? That's Westerness is like another term for Numenor because it was like okay. in the West. Yeah. So they those are Merry and Pippin's knives. Oh, 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 oh. that's right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm no. There's like a lot going wound on here. about with spells for the bane of mortar. There we go. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. So they're gathering the weapons and figuring out what the orcs are like, and then they find that's right. They find Merry and Pippin's weapons, and then Aragorn says, "Well, now if they still live, our." Friend Friends are weaponless. I will take these things, hoping against hope, to give them back. And then I like this next line from Legolas. Legolas says, And I will take these arrows that I can find, for my quiver is empty. So I just like that little, like, yes, what a noble effort indeed, Aragorn. Yeah. And I, I'm going to take these arrows because arrow, I'm here's out. An arrow, here's an arrow, here's an arrow, there's an arrow. He's like, um, I'm kind of out right now, so I'm yeah. just going to grab these arrows I really do quick. like that they address that, though. It's not like the bottomless <laughs> quiver that you get in movies. Yeah. Like, oh, now you're out? You've been, you fired off like 80 arrows. Rose, yeah, because okay, it mentions when they come down, when Legolas and Gimli come down the hill to find Boromir and Aragorn, that Legolas has his knife out um, because he was out of all of his arrows. Yeah. So I don't know, it just made me laugh of Legolas kind of like, I'm just imagining Legolas him saying it like, 
hilarious. Saying it like kind of under his breath, like, and I am going to take these arrows because I need those. Thank you very much. Yep. And then they find this is when they find the weapons of the orcs. And so it says, upon their shields, they bore a strange device, a small white hand in the center of a black field. On the front of their iron helms was set an S rune wrought of some white metal. And it's at this point that I'm like, obviously, they're sent from Saruman. Obviously. Yeah. The yeah. orcs are sent from Saruman. You've got two bad guys. Both of their names <laughs> start, with, start S. with S. Figure it out. One of them is specifically S name. One of them is like white Like themed, blank like... the white. <laughs> Yeah. So, and then they're like, ah, obviously, Sauron. And then Legolas is like, um, he doesn't use elf runes. <laughs> you dumb. <laughs> and then Aragorn says, S is for Saruman, I guess. Who else? Who else? It's obviously. Really? I'm trying to figure it <laughs> yeah, out. And then, yeah, so I wrote down my notes. Obviously, the white S is for Saruman. And then my next note is, yep, there we go. So, obviously, they were sent from Saruman. And then they talk about riddles, which I don't know why. Yeah, Gimli is like, we don't have time to stand here and guess about white elvish runes. Like, we got some stuff to do. And then I like... I like Gimli's answer because Aragorn says, but after that, we must guess the riddles if we are to choose our course rightly. And Gimli says, maybe there is no right choice. Yeah. Ooh, ominous. Like, let's just get this done. Pick a thing. <laughs> Love Gimli. He does not like to mess around. And also kind of saying that, like, there's a lot of literal and metaphorical paths laid out before them. And... Literally anyone they take could lead to doom. It's kind of like in Endgame yeah. how Doctor Strange is like, I foresaw 6,071 endings and we only win in one of them. Like there's a billion ways that, that the three of them could move forward from here and it ends up helping the, the mission, but... Who knows right. at this point? Yeah. And at this point, Gimli's just like, just pick something. Like, we we do not have time for you to like <laughs> sit here and like try to weigh the options. Like, they're literally all bad. Just pick one. So then they go to get one of the boats and they see, they're kind of piecing together what might have happened and they realize that one of the boats is gone. Uh, and they notice that there are no, let's see, who's it? Legolas is like, oh, well, maybe one of the orcs took it. And Gimli points out that if the orcs, they wouldn't have just taken one boat. They would have like either taken them all or what they would have just destroyed them all. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of like them adding a little piece to the puzzle of what happened to Frodo and Sam. And then they put Boromir into the boat and push him off into the sea. And I'll read this one part that I actually was like, oh, wow, that's actually very beautiful. <laughs> the river had taken Boromir, son of Denethor, and he was not seen again in Minas Tirith, standing as he used to stand upon the White Tower in the morning. But in Gondor in after days, it long was said that the elven boat rode the falls in the foaming pool and bore him down through the oh man this is see this is this is where i always written i'm like i'm gonna read this beautiful passage and then i don't <laughs> know how to say a word Oz, yeah, it's Osgiliath. It's Osgiliath, great. And bore him down through Osgiliath and past the many mouths of Anduin and out into the great sea at night under the stars. Right. That's a great send off. Yeah. And it's at this moment that we will take a moment of silence for our friend Boromir. And then everyone starts singing. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. And then they, yeah, and then they sing a long song. And I like that at the end of the song, they're kind of like Gimli says, "You left the east wind to me, but I will say not of it." I don't know. To me, I inter, I don't know. I, I kind of interpret that as like Gimli, why didn't you sing? And he's like, "I would have had to sing about the east wind. I don't want to sing about the east wind." Well, yeah, because okay, okay, okay. So in the song, like. Uh, Aragorn sings a bit about like asking the West Wind, like, "Hey, where's Boromir? I haven't seen Boromir in a while." The West Wind being like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. How about how about you ask how about you ask the South Wind?" And Legolas sings the bit from the South Wind, and the South Wind is like, "Oh yeah, no, like so something went down." And then Aragorn also sings like another bit that's like the North Wind, and the North Wind is yeah. like, "Oh yeah, no, he's dead." Um, <laughs> so then, like, Gim and then Gimli sings nothing. Yeah, I just, I, don't so, know, I just uh, like so that. So the only thing like... left is the East Wind, and the East Wind, like Mordor, is like to the east of Gondor. So yeah, yeah. Uh, poor yeah. Gimli. Anyway, it's like, gee, thanks, guys. Also, I don't know if we know, like, we know that the elves sing, and we know. I mean, I, I kind of also just assume that literally every single race in this book sings, but 
Do the dwarves sing? The dwarves sing, but like, I don't know, like, I don't remember hearing, like, or reading Gimli singing a whole lot. Like, I think they mostly sing amongst themselves because, like, their language is secret. Like, they don't really like talking it around other people. Like, other people don't really, like, dwarvish is not like, a dwarvish isn't like an elective you can take in college. Like, you don't, (laughs) no one else knows dwarvish that isn't a dwarf. So, like, I think most of their songs are, like, for them, sort of. But, like... Elves definitely, like, that's, like, their favorite pastime, and, like, Aragorn was raised by elves, so he's also kind of like that. But with people kind of making up songs off the cuff in, in all of Tolkien's work, really, that always struck me as odd for a long time, until I kind of thought about it more, and, you know, think about, like, your day-to-day life. Like, if you're walking somewhere, if you're, like, sitting somewhere quiet, like, trying to focus on something, 99% of the time, you have headphones in and you're listening to music. Uh, or at least I am. Like, if I have True. to walk somewhere, yeah. it's going to take more than five minutes, I definitely have headphones in. And, like, because we love music. Like, everyone loves music. And, like, back in the day, before you could just carry your favorite song with you you had listen to, sing to it whenever them. you want, you had to sing it. So, like, people sing a lot, like, for entertainment and also, like, They'll come up with songs, but they'll come up with songs based on, like, tunes that already exist. Yeah, Like, gotcha. I think that's kind of, like, the, what you're meant to kind of infer from this, because a lot of the time, like, you know, so, like, those made-up, like, playground songs as a kid, like, you're just setting different words to the same tune, mm-hmm. I think that's kind of what people are usually doing when they're making up, like, off-the-cuff songs in Lord of the Rings. It's yeah. like, that kind of thing. It's like a Mad Libs, but... <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little sad. But, like, I'm guessing this is, you know, like, I'm guessing that this would be, like, a familiar tune, and they're just mm-hmm. like, let's make it about our bro. Yep. Their like, boy. That's always just been my interpretation. Yeah, like, that's always kind of been my interpretation, but it took me a really long time to kind of arrive at that, because before that, I was just like, I can't do that. I can't just come up with a song. <laughs> How are I know, you I mean, that? it's still... It does still amaze me. Like, I think Frodo does it when they're they're in Lothlorien and they're grieving Gandalf. And Frodo just completely makes up a song about Gandalf. And, and Sam is like, oh, that was so great. Like, sing more. And I think it might it might have mentioned or maybe just me and my guest talked about it that, like, this was probably something that Frodo, like, picked up from Bilbo of just, like, being yeah. a- able to, like, make up songs about people. So, I mean, it's the I mean, same I still basic think principle it's, as... it's amazing, though. <laughs> I mean, it's, like, the same basic principle as a rap battle. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Right? There's like, gotta people be... still do that today. It's just differently. I wonder if th- there's got to be a rap battle that's, like, Harry Potter versus Frodo or something. Oh, no. I'm sure that, like, there's, a, that. like, a- epic rap battles of history, like Gandalf versus yeah. Dumbledore. Like, I'm, yeah, there's I'm 100% be certain that exists. Oh, my gosh. Gandalf would 100% beat Dumbledore. So oh, ma- yeah, no. Gandalf is so no savage. Question. And like, yeah, this no, is coming Gandalf. from someone who, Dumbledore is one of my favorite characters, man. Gandalf is an old queen. He doesn't oh care. Oh my God, he's good. Yeah. Anywho. I love I can't him. wait for him to come back. Anywho. <laughs> you know who's not coming back? <laughs> Boromir. He dead. <laughs> they go back to the shore and they look around and Aragorn sees that there's lots of footprints, but they, because they were all kind of like walking around earlier, it's hard to make out exactly what happened. Right. And then Aragorn notices that two of the bags are missing and one of them was Sam's. So they piece two and two together that Frodo... And they even say that, like, oh, Sam even mentioned that Frodo wouldn't have wanted to take any of us, to lead any of us to danger. They realize now that... Sorry, I'm reading this thing. I Sometimes I highlight stuff and I'm like, oh, that means I should read it. Let's see. So it <laughs> says, he fled certainly, said Aragorn, but not, I think, from orcs. What it, oh, oh, that's that's why I highlighted this. Anywho. Yeah. Yeah. So Frodo, so Frodo, um, they piece together that Frodo and Sam have left together. And then they're like, but but why? Why would he just all of a sudden leave? That's weird. Like, we just left him to think by himself for a bit. What happened? And this is when Aragorn remembers what Boromir told him with his dying words of, I went yeah. and talked to Frodo and I made the grave mistake of asking him for the ring. And and now this is what I'm paying for. Right. And this is when Aragorn does the biggest bro move. Oh my ever. god, Aragorn ain't no snitch. Aragorn ain't no snitch. I love that dude. What he thought was the cause of Frodo's sudden resolve and flight, Aragorn did not say. The last words of Boromir he long kept secret. And just That's my dude. Ma- like he did like Boromir in my mind, Boromir did not deserve 
to have Aragorn keep that secret. It, like if I had been Air, if I had been in Aragorn's position, I a hundred percent would have been like, "Oh my God, Boromir told me." I'm just remembering now. Boromir just, like, told me that he blast. went and asked Frodo for the ring. Like he was the last <laughs> person to talk to Frodo before he left. It's a hundred percent Boromir's fault. But he, Aragorn's a bro. He's not gonna, you know, do that to his other bro in death. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, I, I was just Bro like, code. that's just Aragorn's a class act. He's a yeah, class he act. So he's husband material. <laughs> but for who we don't know. I'm assuming Arwen at this mm. point. Who knows? Mm. We'll see. Mm. One of one female <laughs> characters to have to have appeared. I was so going to say it's either oh, like, no, it's, it's either Galadriel two, or Arwen or mm. I don't. I'm assuming it's not Goldberry. Mm, Galadriel but... spoken for. So is Goldberry, yeah. for that matter. I know, yeah, it's not... Although, I get, I don't know, Goldberry and Tom, I get, like, uh, I get open relationship vibes from those two. <laughs> that's so... If only they would venture outside of the old forest. That's 100%. That's the only reason that they don't have multiple partners. Oh, yeah, because no. there's no one else in the old forest, and they're not going to mm-hmm. leave the old forest. So, oh, yep. that's so accurate. But I just love all of these... <laughs> because Tom Bombadil is such a... F- enigma i love all these he's useless i love all these side comments that everyone that like my guests will say every now and then that like we're just kind of using to slowly piece together what kind of a person tom bombadil is so i don't like no tolkien himself admitted that tom bombadil adds nothing to the narrative tolkien was like i just like him i just think he's neat like you you didn't have to though (laughs) have you seen that meme yeah that's what i was referencing that's like tom bombadil is the the marge simpson (laughs) holding the potato going i just think they're neat and i already used that to talk about marge was tolkien and the potato was horses <laughs> the potato is horses and food and Tom Bombadil. <laughs> and Tom Bombadil. And and topography. He's really into like, to- Oh like- my god. I don't even think it's that he's into topography. I think it's just that he wants to prove to the readers that he built this world and he like, wants to show it, it off. Dude. He, he really, wants like- to be like if, look at how much work I put into this. Look at all of this. Look at we it. Know, look at this world I built. We know, I built. John. We know. We're all man. duly impressed. Please shut up about the hills. Oh, man, oh, man. So it's at this point now that... So they're deciding what to do, whether to go after the orcs who have Merry and Pippin or whether to try and track down Frodo and Sam. And Aragorn decides... Let's see. So he says... My heart speaks clearly at last. The fate of the bearer is in my hands no longer. The company played its part. Yet we that remain cannot forsake our companions while we have strength left. So they decide that they're going to go after the orcs and try and save Merry and Pippin instead of going after Frodo and Sam. Because I think they also know that like they're kind of like, well, Frodo and Sam aren't super competent, but at the same time, they're at least not being captured by orcs at the well, moment. Like, Fro- Mary Frodo and, and Pippin Sam are at least are adults. Like, yeah. by <laughs> Hobbit standards, like, Frodo and Sam are, like, grown-ups. Frodo's, like, in his 50s. Sam's in maybe his 40s, late 30s. Mary and Pippin are actual children. Mary and Pippin are, like, <laughs> college students on a gap year. Like, they don't... Oh, they're, man. They're what a gap year that is. Like, right? Like, they... <laughs> well, you know, hang on. Left of Here's their the own thing. devices, they I, would be eating ramen. I still think Mary is way more competent than Pippin. Oh, no. Mary is 100% more competent than Pippin, but, like, that's not... There's not a high bar. That's true. Um, Because Mary is the one that they send ahead to, like, at the very beginning of Fellowship. I don't even remember what it is. Where Frodo's like, I've bought a house across the way in... I don't know what it's called. Crick Hollow. Crick Hollow. Oh, there I we go. That. Thank you. I don't know how you knew that. I was... The only words that were coming to my mind were Quiverdale, <laughs> and that doesn't sound... <laughs> That's not a thing. That is very much not a thing. I was also just trying not to say Riverdale, I think. <laughs> so... I told you, man, I love Lord of the Rings more than life itself. I get it. It's okay. That's exactly how I would be like if someone was like, man, like, what? what's Tom Riddle's middle name? What's Tom Riddle's middle name? And I'm like, Marvolo, Marvolo Riddle. Yep. Or if they're like, yep. what's what's the street address of the place that Sirius lives at? 13? No, it's 12. I messed myself up. Yep. Number 12, Grimald Place. That's it's 12. That's it. Because she played, she did a little, a little plot twist because she 
think it'd be 13 and it's 12. Anywho. <laughs> So they pack up whatever they can and they leave behind anything else that's going to be extra and decide to go after the orcs. And, and they and Aragorn says, like, this is going to be a, a long haul. The, the plan is to travel during the like to travel as long as we can before we have to stop to rest because we're going to do whatever yeah. we can to save these children from yeah, the they're orcs. They're about to run like an actual marathon, yeah. like an actual <laughs> cross country marathon. And they're like, all right, get ready, dudes. Like, I hope your shoe, like, I hope your shoes are comfortable because this is going to take a minute. <laughs> yeah. I like Gimli mentions, let's see, let me go back and find it. Gimli says, well, after them, dwarves too can go swiftly and they do not tire sooner than orcs. So I like that Gimli is like, I can do this. Yeah. Like, I can hang with y'all. <laughs> yeah, Gimli's down. He's just like, I listen, I know my legs are short, but like, I got this. I think personally, I think the best thing to do would be to Send Legolas ahead. Send him Naruto running ahead of the group. <laughs> and he'll catch the orcs like that. And then and then yeah. we got the Merry and Pippin. Also, the other thing is that the orcs cannot possibly be that far off unless they move at the speed of light. Like I don't know. Like the the dudes like took a minute to like sing their song and everything. Like, yeah, I, I mean like was, yeah, they've taken I- I get that it was some an honor time. thing, but like it's been it's been like two hours. Well, yeah, that's what I was gonna say is that they can't possibly be more than a couple hours ahead of this trio. So the golden trio, hey. Hermione, Ron, and Harry. Who? So that's pretty much how this chapter ends. Is they're like, all right, let's go off into the yeah. the gray shadows and the stony land. Yep. And so I'm very excited to follow this trio because this was the group that I originally was like, I mean, if you're going to split up the fellowship and send some part to Gondor and some part to Mordor, I would vote that you send Legolas Gimli and Aragorn to Mordor with Frodo Mm -hmm. and then everyone else, who cares? Because I was yeah. like, Legolas, Gimli, and Aragorn just seems like the dream team. So yeah. I'm excited to see that happening in the in this half of the book. This is also a much shorter, this is the shortest of the books. So it'll go a lot quicker, I think, than I'm going to realize. Yeah. So I'm yeah. hyped. And like, the, yeah, like, and the action, like, of the book is just like, it, it just reads faster. Like, it's physically shorter, but it just reads faster because there's more going on. Like, there's more yeah. characters. There's more perspectives. Like, you're getting more of, like, the world that they're in beyond just, like, and this is where this great city once stood. Like, you're going to get to see an <laughs> actual standing city that still yeah, exists. Yeah, with people in yeah. it. <laughs> Instead with of, people like, in and it. this is where... <laughs> This yeah, is where the, the crumbling, crumbling ruins stones of my fallen Quiverdale fathers. Like, all right, I get it. To be. <laughs> yep, random chair of prophecy sitting in the woods. You know, <laughs> right. it sh- sometimes it be that way. Also, this is just so random, but I don't care. I'm sharing it. So, what I'm imagining this chair, this throne to be, somewhere apparently in Florida, in some swamp, there's. It's called like the Devil's Throne or something. And it's some kind of a chair in the middle of the swamp that's like super demonically haunted or whatever. And people go and sit in it and then they get haunted and then they die or something. So I don't yep. know. That's, that's just kind of what I'm yeah, imagining no, is a, this, there's this a stone devil chair tree ch- just sitting mm-hmm. off by itself very yeah. ominously. Nope. Yeah, no, like, the the world is full of cursed things. Like, he's just, he's just reflecting life in this. Like, there's the devil tree in New Jersey. Like, that's, there's just cursed stuff all over the place. There's a devil tree in New Jersey? Yeah, no, I it's like next to a sub, de- no, it's like a, next to a sub development. It's surrounded by barbed wire that it is now growing around. And people will, like, take, like, a twig off of this tree and keep it as a memento and then end up, like, dying three weeks later. It's like, there's all these crazy anecdotes about it. Ooh, there it is. The devil's tree. Yeah. Wikipedia yeah. is a solitary oak with some dead limbs growing in an undeveloped field on a mountain road in Martinsville section of Bernard's Township. Oh my god, that's it's a like, creepy looking tree, right? Oh, it's the creepy. Mm-hmm. I want to go. It, it, class I think field, it was like a hanging tree. Like class back in field the day. trip to the <laughs> Devil's Tree. This is right after yep. our class field trip to New Jersey. I mean, um, New Jersey. That's very different from what I was about to say. <laughs> New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> They're both new. They're both yeah. new, but anyway. it's close enough. Close yeah, enough. Planning a meetup, uh, talking about meetup. It's happening in New Zealand. If you want to buy your <laughs> get ticket, your tickets they're now. like five thousand dollars, and it takes five billion hours to get there. Um, yeah. 
So you circled um, the globe a few times. I guess maybe I should read. I haven't even looked at the back of the book. Let's see. Frodo and his companions of the ring have been beset by danger during their quest to prevent the ruling ring from falling into the hands of the Dark Lord by destroying it in the cracks of doom. They have lost the wizard Gandalf. Spoiler alert. What if you were like just (laughs) going to buy the three books in Barnes and Noble and you're like, oh, what's the two towers about? Gandalf dies. What? (laughs) And Boromir, so also another spoiler, and Boromir, seduced by the power of the ring, tried to seize it by force. Wow, there we go. Anywho. Oh, um, sorry, I did want to read. In the beginning of my edition, there are some like random uh, blurbs and reviews and stuff. And I liked this mm-hmm. one quote that they pulled from. It's so funny. There are all of these quotes from like newspapers. And then there's one that they threw in the middle by C.S. Lewis. <laughs> And it says, oh, yeah. Like, has anyone told you that they were bros? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know this. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to. That's why it says, I don't know if this was about the two towers specifically or the three books as a whole, but it says here are beauties which pierce like swords or burn like cold iron. That's C.S. Hmm. Lewis. Well, con- considering that they hated each other's books, that's very nicely put. <laughs> well, the other thing is. I was like, that just sounds like a line of poetry that they that the publishers took from like one of his poems, maybe. And they're like, yeah, it's a yeah. review. He didn't. <laughs> how do how do we know that this poem that he wrote wasn't about Lord of the Rings? We don't know. <laughs> yeah, no. Has anyone told you like the legend about how they each based characters off of each other? I have not heard this. What? Yeah. Okay. So y- you're familiar with C.S. Lewis, it's right? Tolkien like, Aslan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. No, he is not. Um, they based side characters off of each other. <laughs> yeah, no, Aslan is Aslan is Jesus's persona. Um. <laughs> persona. Oh my god. Oh my You're god. You're welcome. You're welcome for that. But yeah, um, do you want me to tell you who Tolkien yes, is? In please, he's the professor in Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh, that makes so much sense. Oh, right? that's great. Absent-minded old man stuck up in his study wouldn't notice if four children physically moved into <laughs> his house. <laughs> Oh my god. It's so accurate. <gasps> so the character that the character that uh Tolkien uh based on Lewis appears in this book. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Don't say who it is yet. I'm just gonna spend the whole I, I'm not gonna tell you. Just think um, like, I wanna see if I can it out. never shuts up. Oh my god, I'm so that just makes me so happy that he based the professor off of him. Yeah. Right? Oh my like gosh. according to legend. Yeah. <laughs> According to legend. But yeah, they, <gasps> like, they were oh best friends. Like, they would have Sunday dinner together and everything. Like, Tolkien has, like, a, there's, like, big compendium of, like, Tolkien's letters, and a lot of them are, like, to and from Lewis. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I love this. Anywho. Well, that being said, um, Haley, is there something you would like to plug or share with our audience or tell people where they can find you on the internet if you want them to find you on the internet? I mean, I'm I'm a non-entity on the internet. Um, <laughs> I'm just I'm just going to plug you. like <laughs> Honestly, I'm just going to plug like Tolkien's works that aren't the trilogy. Like I love the trilogy so much, but like he wrote so much stuff like his whole world is even more expansive than in these like if y'all are following this podcast like check out his other stuff it's it explains a lot and contextualizes a lot and it's just a lot of fun that's really all i got awesome i'm it it makes me happy to hear that about his other works and stuff because my producers tell me that i am obligated i'm contractually obligated to 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 do episodes about anything that has tolkien's name on it so (laughs) it's good to hear that that it's good (laughs) no i'm no no. there's i mean like it's it's all really good like half joking but there's a lot of his other works that I definitely um, want to want to dig into and learn more about, and I'm scared of the Silmarillion. <laughs> you know, but... I think honestly, the fact that you're going through like each one of these books like analytically instead of just reading it and like passively like 
ignoring, like, well, I don't get that, so I'm not going to look into it more. Like, the Mm -hmm. fact that you're going over this, like, analytically, when you get to the Silmarillion, you'll be like, I know Uh, that guy! I heard about that guy in the books! That one time, that one time that he just mentioned him very off the cuff, and then I was like, I'm sure that doesn't matter. And then I talked about it for half an hour with some rando. Like, (laughs) Oh, I did say, there is one character who I still can't get over, who I'm like, who are you? And I think it's Ted Sandyman, is is the name of this random oh character and i think it's just i think it's just some <laughs> random person from hobbiton who appears in the yeah. hobbit but yeah. the way that they bring the way that tolkien brings him up so casually it, it's almost as if he's he has the same reputation as tom bombadil and i'm like who the f is ted sandy man like he's what the just heck? their <laughs> shitty neighbor <laughs> oh man yeah so. he does not appear in the silmarillion <laughs> darn I want to learn all about Ted Sandy, man. He is my white whale. (laughs) I'm sure he had some notes tucked away somewhere. (sighs) All right. That's what I'm talking about is proudly a member of the Bacon and Eggs Network. You can learn more about them by going to baconandeggs.media. The cover is by Graphite, a.k.a. Vaishan Brandon. Support him on Instagram at graphite.vmb. You can find the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Tolkien About Pod. You can find me on Twitter at mcwatt416 and Instagram at mcturndownforwatt. And then now I have two very exciting announcements that fu- hopefully future Mary Clay will now insert herself and tell you about. Thank you, Past Mary Clay, for that wonderful introduction. This is future Mary Clay here to tell you that there is a That's What I'm Talking About Patreon coming very soon to an internet near you. We are currently working out the details of the tiers and the perks that will be going with those tiers. So just stay tuned for more news about the Patreon coming very soon. It would mean a lot to me and also to Tyler and Ethan and the Bacon and Eggs Network if you gave your support to That's What I'm Talking About it would just mean a lot and and I appreciate you and all that and all that you wonderful listeners have to offer. So, thank you and now back to Past Mary Clay. And then the next announcement is that there is now a Facebook group for that's what I'm talking about. So, you can join that. It doesn't have anything to do with Patreon or money or anything. It's totally free for you to join. Come one, come all, come all. We'll talk. I think what I'll do is I'll have a thread that everyone can comment on and talk about how dumb I am and how, oh my god, I can't believe she thinks that Aragorn is going to marry Arwen because he's actually going to marry Boromir's ghost. Isn't that insane? (laughs) Or you can just talk all of the... (laughs) All of the spoilers you want, and I'm going to ignore it. That's going to be a really dangerous game. But I feel like it would be fun for me to go back and look through like five years from now when I'm done with this series. Anywho. So yes, please join the Facebook group. So all of those links will be in the descri- in the episode description. Please go do all of that, and it would be totally lit. Do the kids still say lit nowadays? I do. A lot. <laughs> cool. So... Haley, any parting words for our audience? Stay nerdy, guys. (laughs) And that's what I'm talking about. Bye.